What's up, buddy? How are you? How are you? Good, man. How's uh, how's everybody doing? Everyone staying safe, healthy? Yeah, yeah. Everybody Good. on my end. How about you? Yeah, same, same. A lot of uh, a lot of these, a lot of Zoom calls with family and stuff like that. So, yeah. The only one I really, uh, only one I really get to see is my brother, who I work with. So. And you're obviously still full time working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no, they keep us in business, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going back to the rats days. I love it. Yeah, the good old days. Yeah. So is this for, uh, this is through Sweet Lax here? Yep. Awesome. So we've been, we've been offering these three nights a week, just kind of various guests. Um, last week we had a pretty heavy Notre Dame, uh, crew of Kavanaugh and uh who's the the D middies um yeah Nears near yeah. yeah Jack yeah very nice so it's just been kind of different uh positions and schemes and everything just kind of been able to offer it to all of our family so it's been going good so perfect appreciate you coming on absolutely Give it one more minute for people to log on we're just over 75 right now. Yeah. And just let me know if, uh, if I ever need to rewind or pause it at a certain point. Just Yeah, I mean, or, or uh, how long are each clip? I see this one's like five. Yeah, I mean, either let one clip run through and then I'll, you know, yeah. kind of dissect it afterwards. And then yeah, we'll start for sure. I'll let, I'll let each play run through it once yeah. or twice each time. So it's seven o'clock. So we'll get uh, we'll get going here. So uh, I'm Brad Gillies. I'm the Upstate Club director. I'm joined by a former teammate of mine, Mike Manley, a former teammate with the Rochester Nighthawks, um, a current member of the New York Riptide in the NLL and uh, the Chrome in the PLL. Uh, Rattler for how many six to eight years? Probably something around there. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Some, since 2012. Yeah. So a uh, defender of the year in 2014 uh, in the MLL, um, a Duke alum, uh, won a national championship there. Yep. So uh, definitely one of the one of the top guys in the in the game as far as long poles go. So uh, we uh, we really appreciate you taking your time out of your day and, and joining us here at Sweet Lax. Uh, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. So we'll uh, we'll get right into it. So um, the the first clip. Um, it's just uh, you matched up with uh, Steel Stanwick. Um, so, obviously, this is a matchup where a guy's a little more shifty and uh, big feeder. So, um, going into a matchup like this, what uh, I'll, I'll let it play once, but what is your kind of mindset going into a game or knowing you're playing a guy like that? Yeah, it's just uh, a guy like that, like you said, you can see him right there. It's just he's a two-dimensional player, right? Like, he's a threat from anywhere. He can shoot. He can uh, – he's a good – threat as a, a shooter scorer and he's a good threat as a passer so either he's definitely one of the harder matchups uh, especially back then and um, if you look in this film um, it, it's it's tough to be a defenseman in behind the net and force him in one one direction you know typically you try to read the scout yeah you can point your hips in that direction and try to force him that way but a lot of good attacking like Steele does here he uses that net as a point of direction um, and I always take pride in my footwork around, um, the net. So, um, because you can see right there, I don't jump the net. I'll gather my two steps and then I will step over the net. Um, that way that, uh, avoids you from right in that middle when he changes direction there, it's basically instinct to put your foot down. So when you're in midair jumping the net and you put your foot down when he changes the direction, most of the time you're going to put your foot down right in the netting of the, of the net and your cleats are going to hung up in there. So I always teach my defenseman around that point is just take that extra step because he you can use the crease, obviously. They can't. Take that extra gather step and just take a big step over the back end of the net. That way it avoids you. See, he, he was trying to get me caught up in the net, and you can yeah. see I just kind of use my little gather step there, and I just use my angle. 
All right, so just cut that angle. We do that. That was one of the coach uh, Gabrielli, Gabrielli's great drills we did back in the uh, in back at Duke days. Um, is just you know we'd get hung up around the net there, and then we just cut our angles and we just kind of meet him at goal line extended. Um, you know, so obviously. You know- you know to hop here, and then if he does come back, you can beat him to this point right here because he has to go all the way around the crease. Exactly. So, you know, you, you see with a lot of younger kids is they kind of try to ride them on their hip there. They'll just kind of stay attached to their hip, and they'll follow the same line the attackman is running, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's the beauty of uh, playing defense behind the net is, you know, you don't have to be the quickest guy. You don't have to be – you know, the best footwork kind of guy, but you can be very smart and use your angles and, and play your angles very well. Um, ultimately, you kind of wanted to, to avoid that. You know, if I could do it better is, is to get into him earlier and push him away from that so he can avoid, get my hands in right there, or if I can get a pop in here and just keep forcing him up and out. Um, but, you know, it, it's just kind of like I said, it's one of those situations where it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to force an attackman especially a shifty attackman right behind the net in just one direction. Um, so, I mean, just I, – I'd say as an ex-defenseman, just be very comfortable playing both ways and, play, and just know where you are, especially on the field, know where that crease is. Now, in a situation like that, if he does have a – and we'll see this later maybe, but if he does have a step on you and you're not able to turn him, or is, is that a point where you're just going to try to drive him out as far as away from the net as you can? Yep. Or you are um, in a situation where he's coming back and forth, back and forth? Absolutely. If, if he does get a step on me, um, nowadays tackling are so good at tucking that bottom hand and wrapping that stick around you. Um, I try to at least get my stick on him, you know, just try to interrupt that and try to almost meet my head. If I can't get into his arms and can't get my, and can't get a good push on him, I try to get the head of my stick on the head of his stick where it's going to somewhat disrupt his, his shot. Um, but that's if I'm, I'm, I'm beating yeah, myself on you. Yeah. yeah. But ultimately, you know, once you get him, once he starts going, you cut that angle, just drive into him and just try to get low and sit there. So this is a completely different type of matchup. So, yeah, so we'll move to – so now you're playing against John Grant, um, obviously one of the best scorers of all time, if not the best. Yeah. Um, and he is just as big and physical and skilled as it comes. And so I know this is probably an exhausting game for you because you're just – I watched a bunch of these clips and you're just – hammering on each other the whole entire game so yeah just take through a little bit of what your mindset is here obviously it, it, you being a big strong guy that's why you draw this kind of matchup so yeah these are uh the, honestly these are one of my favorite type of matchups um and to, I, I talk to people about this all the time it's the most exhausting type of matchup too because it's just two big guys just leaning on each other the entire night um or day and John, like you said, John can score, and I, I think he's one of the hardest matchups I ever, I've ever covered, just because he can score from any angle, anywhere, in any hand. And, you know, he's a left hand dominant, but you can, you, you've seen it. He does all the one handed stuff behind the back around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so with John, though, you know, he's not as, as quick and shifty as Steele. Um, and so in this matchup, I'm able to get into him a little earlier because he likes he does a lot of his scoring right around the crease there. So with a guy like like this, where you got a big matchup, you want to try to body him up um, as soon as possible. And you know you can see he he kind of leaned into me. We kind of met that we met together. He, you know we we basically made the same contact at the same time. Um, you know if you're gonna do that, you know I try to get one big push in there to push him out. Just make yep. stay, make sure you stay under control and keep your feet under you. Um, so, cause a lot of guys, you know, he tried to do it in a different game. He tried it when I went to lean in on him, he tried to step back. So I would get over my toes and then he would dodge again on me. So I'd kind of be off balance. Um, so just, just anytime you're doing this or making hard contact and then getting a shove, just make sure you have a good balance and you can recover pretty easily. Now talk about this. So now when he tries that inside roll, how important is it uh, in that previous one? Um, the first time he came at you so you do a, he, he tries it a bunch um in this game but he's you drive him so his angle is so poor and he, he forces a couple of bad shots in other moments but this time he because of your angle that you're able to turn him back and then drive him away from the net like how important is it to to drive that man once he does try to that inside roll so you do a good yeah, job of turning him See how I mean, like, like I said, if you're going to make that contact, try to maintain that contact. Once you create that gap, 
and that inside he's going to get that inside roll and get that position on you um and i would say for this type of uh, you know that's it's probably one of the hardest positions especially in the in the college game now with diving and in the mll and, and the pll is they have they can dive across the crease and it's, it's such a disadvantage to the defenseman there because you're going to get called for a push regardless of of the situation the attackman knows where they're going um and i've had this battle with referees over and over and over again is he turn you know he doesn't do it here but a lot of attack and turn and they're they're going to the net regardless right you know and they're gonna and you're on their back essentially and they're gonna dive across the crease and then you're gonna get called for a push yeah. or if you know if they don't score you're gonna call for a push or they score or you know john makes a great save um but like you see like the, for that inside role though it's an it's kind of awkward but i always like to have a wide base there um I, I that way he can't he has to inside roll when he does inside roll he has to take a big inside roll he can't just do a quick inside roll if he does inside roll he's got to step around my foot or step around my knee i like that and maintaining the contact is the, the yeah. really important key there on that if you just pop him and give him space that's when he can kind of have your way with you especially if he if he got you all the way to that five and five area so Absolutely. maintaining that and then driving right away yeah so we'll go through it. We got a couple of clips of our, our Sweet Axe guys, so I'd, I'd love to hear some just critique or even just yeah. something that they did well love it. Um, in this. Um, but so just even spacing um, yeah. as far as how, how much room we're giving the guy, um, everything like that. But I'll let it play a couple of times first. And kind of resting your stick what, where you want to rest it or – Yep. So. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean overall, I think uh, we always we always use the term trail to X, um, and right when he gets to that forty five point from the base of the, the, I guess the tip of the triangle, the back of the net, in between the in between the goal line, is right when you want to th start kind of throwing your stick over, or you know if you have preference, just get into him. He does a great job here where he has a stick behind him because he's trailing the X, and then you know he either keeps riding the guy, riding the guy upfield. Um, and I, a lot of goalies, you know, they have to practice, practice this shot, right? Like that's just such a common shot in lacrosse. The question and, mark there, yeah. Yeah, that question mark. And I, the guy, look at him, he's, he question marks, but he's fading away from the net, right? You know, versus, so he's, and he's all over him. I'd say the only thing is it, it, it's what to the next level, because you're right there on him, is on that question mark, just try to get your stick on his stick or somewhere to try to disrupt that shot. Um, and, kind of, I, and I know this is what I like to I like say, kind of like a, getting the hand in the wickets or spokes. It's nope. if a guy, and if you're strong and you have your hand, your stick on the guy's bottom hand, it's going to disrupt it a little bit and probably send that ball over the net. Kind of a, a, it's a last ditch thing, but if you're in decent enough position, you should be able to at least do that. So. Yeah. And it, especially with some of these guys nowadays, if you get a slash in their bottom hand, it, it's not as effective um, just because these guys are so strong and that bottom hand is already going, going down when you slash. Mm -hmm. So like you said, if any way you can, I always say I try to meet. So if my hands are here, that bottom hand is going down. But if I try to meet the top, basically my stick at this top hand, it's going to kind of disrupt that shot a little bit where it might not go, you know, the bottom corner might go high. Um, but ultimately if you can't, if you're in the best position is, and they have that bottom hand is to lift that bottom hand that's going to mess up his shot the best way and then drive his hips out. But yeah, overall, like, I mean, I, for the most part, defensively, I, I somewhat take up a square approach um, at the X, just because I said, it's hard to, it's hard to be, do I want him to go one way? Essentially? Yes. But I'm comfortable going both ways. Um, mm -hmm. And that's all preference. It's preference. It's scout. Um, if that guy, you know, he, he maybe like out of the 10 times you go one-on-one, -on -one, he's going eight of the times to his right then, yeah, I'd say maybe in the second half or so, switch it up and force him to his left hand because, obviously, he's only going to his right. And so just uh, you said at the start, uh, the point that you're kind of looking to make contact on, where is that? Yep. Um, basically, where we talked about in that first clip is right around, like, so if you go to the back of the net, right where the tip of the triangle is there, it's just in between the back of the net yep. and, and the front post. So basically, like, just at the – at a, if you basically make a right angle from the goal line, to Here, the back, right. yeah, and then just at that 45, just right, make the up. So there's a goal line. So that right, 45 right here. Right. Yep. So that's where you kind of, that's essentially where you want to start getting into them. Does it happen like that every time? Absolutely not. 
but uh, ideally that's where you'd like to start creating your contact so you can start pushing them out. And I think right here that he did a great job. I mean, he's not right up close to the net where he's pushing him out and even his body position deters him from going inside and he's put and the guy ends up, you know, going wide, pushing him wide. So, so I think would like to try to make a little bit of contact yes. there at this yeah. point right here where he yep. is. Give him, give, him, give him even wider or, you know, if he's that, if you force him that wide, you know, he might not even take that shot. He might look yep. up, you know, pass it forward or look to be go behind. So this one, uh, it, it's kind of, so we, as, a, as an offensive um, group, we're always talking about dodge, pass, pass, dodge. And so yeah. in this situation, that's, the offense does a good job of that. And our long pole is sliding and recovering. Um, and it's just at, at a poor approach. So just uh, I'll let you touch on that a little bit. So there, a lot of times these guys from X are catching and attacking right away. So yeah, our approach is so important because of how quickly that ball moves. You're helping on the inside, and then all of a sudden you are covering a guy with a full head of steam. So, so this is – I'm always caught in this position, right? Um, this is one of the harder positions because you want to help inside, and you, it's all about how you, how you want to go about your scout. Um, whether a lot of times what we do is we want that guy to – that. Um, that dodging midi to actually roll back and pass it to the top of the midi. So what a lot of times we'll do is I'm, if I'm covering X, I actually push out an X mm -hmm. um, and I, and I stop that and I stop that pass. Am I really helping out the, I guess the recovery or, you know, basically a two slide? Not really, but that's where your midis are and your backside defensemen are their, their level of dodge and their pipeline. Um, which, you know, we can go over that a little bit, but so that, that guy, you're not going to get lost. You're not going to lose that guy. And a lot of times the attacking, the attacking will start rotating for defensemen. If you, if you see that rotation happen, we just maintain our position. They're just going to come right to you. And that leaves us, you know, we're able to maintain our one, maintain our two. Um, but a lot of, like you said, a lot of it's, you know, dodge, pass, pass, dodge, or, you know, try to beat your man, pass the ball. So, that takes away that pass. That's it's a basically a set play. Dodge on the alley, draw a slide, move it forward, and then they're going to come. And then there's going to be a lot of movement on the backside. Um, so I think that's a deterrent right there. It's just a push out at X. But yeah. with that being said, a lot of it, you know, does it happen like that every time? No, because a lot of attackmen are smart and they will push the push to the crease, basically towards the back of the net. So if you go one way, they go to the other the other way. And the, you end up getting hung sometimes, which, you know, in, in the MLL and the PLL, that's fine because there's a shot clock. So I, I can play the waiting game if they want to sit back there. Uh, and, you know, like well, I said. And, and in college now too, so. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly, in college now too. So if you, if you, if you, you know, instead of creating a play for them, just sit there. You know, and, like, obviously the, everybody else in front of the net, all they really have to do is worry about their matchup. Um, especially with the, with the shot clock now, instead of trying to, you know, let's say he forced um, – one of the rules we always like to say is go ball side. Approach from the ball side, which sometimes like this it's hard to do because the attack will press, press the crease. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, I'll just say, you know, I always push out at X so they try to deter that pass. Or if they do get it to the back, it, it, it's way deep in the, uh, in the field. Yep. Yeah, and it, it's, it's all about not allowing them to catch from the exact point that they want to catch and dodge from, even if they have to change their, their, their yeah. catching point way out here or even deeper than they, they want to be to give you extra time to recover. Yeah. It's just it's, – it's very valuable yards that you kind of gain by, by doing that. And, so. and then the other thing, too, is when you do that, when, you, when you're kind of in front of the net and then they pass it back, you're swiveling your head nonstop to help out on the crease. And your guy can be moving in that, you know, that split second, then you have your head move, moving and he might be attacking the pass. And then you have a, you know, a crappy, you end up having a crappy approach. Um, so that's another thing. That's another deterrent why we kind of step out, out back. We step out, out behind the net with them. And that way, you know, that guy's got a, that midfielder's got to basically stop, turn around. He's either got to re-dodge in the wing or he's got to pass it back up top. Gotcha. And then if he does get in this situation that you 
you yep. want to approach that top shoulder there Absolutely. as well. He, he approaches the the right shoulder here, and it, it allows his guy to get a step on him and uh, and obviously leads to a goal. So if you do get in that situation, you need to have a little bit of a higher uh, – Yeah. So we always right say foot approach is what we call it here. Yep, right foot approach, right? Um, take that right foot approach no matter where you are on the field, if it's up top or behind. Have a strong right foot approach there. Yeah. Um, and I, I think maybe the other thing too is, you know, you kind of – you 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 lead with your stick a little bit too much there. Um, get that stick in that right position. But you ultimately want to – you know, you, your hands are what's going to move the guy. Your stick sometimes. But – you know, that you get that slap, you kind of get a slap check right there, and it kind of throws you out of position a little bit. Do you want to lead with your stick? Absolutely. But follow it up with good positioning with your feet and hands. Um, so, and especially around the crease there, the stick, like I said, hand, hands and feet are the most important thing around the crease there. You got to push them out and push them up. And then when they go for the shots, that's when you want to use your stick to try to disrupt it. So we have a couple of plays here. I'll play them both um, back to back, but it's just uh... – Pull to pull picks, um, and I, I'm pretty sure this is how you guys play them. But for the most part, you're you're free to switch these at any point, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in this situation, they're able to get through. So if you do want to keep your matchups, we're fine with that. But a lot of times, a switch just helps with the guy that does switch has better position. He's he's three yards ahead of you, and and he he has a, a much better chance of turning that guy. So. Yep. Talk a little bit through that, but they do a pretty good job of it here. I'll, I'll play it a couple of times, but. So he gets them yeah. through pretty well. And yep. uh, there's a lot of space for them to get through there. I mean, that, that's a tough pick too. I mean, he doesn't get a huge head of steam there from the corner. Um, but, you know, a lot of offenses are running that pick there, you know, especially out of bounds plays. Um, typically they're doing it with a, a, a a short stick though um and they're doing like a big little pick and I, i'm perfectly okay with swapping on the the pole pull matchup um when it comes to pole pull matchups we're not too worried about our matchups there yeah. uh, you know obviously obviously if you need a switch you need a switch if you can get through it and get over the top i would say error on, on the side of getting over the top but i mean over the top is getting over on the upfield side of it because if he does try to push underneath you kind of have that angle um, it's all preference. It's, it, it's, it depends on where you are in your position, honestly. Um, and then just your, your deep. Oh, just, uh, sorry, just to clarify with that. So you're saying you want this guy to come over the top of that pick rather than trying to get underneath it. Um, uh, yeah, I would. Um, it, it's preference. It's tough because I would say, I, like I, I would say because if you, if you go over the top, you're coming from the top of the, basically from upfield down. Where if you maybe, you know, go underneath it, um, if you go underneath it and that guy doesn't switch, he's kind of got that straight sprint underneath. And you're, in your, you know what I mean? And you might be just right on his back shoulder if you're underneath. It, it, it all depends on position. If you get on, if you go the other side and you have good position, it is what it is. You know, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer a lot of times with this. It's just kind of, you know, how it's just preference. Um, and, and playing with your teammate and what they want you to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm a believer in over top of these ones, um, especially this deep in the, in the field. Absolutely. It just gives you a lot more time to recover if you do. He does happen to get a step on you. And, yeah. uh, and if you do end up switching, the guy's right in front of you. Exactly. Right? Like he's right, you see him right in front of you versus if, if you go under it and the guy tells you to switch, you kind of got to find him with your stick or look behind you and you might be – he might be running behind you and it's kind of a given and not a given goal, but almost a sprint to the net there. So here's this, another one of these, but it's not played uh, very well. And yes. uh, so we'll just talk through this one, but talk about who's deciding who to switch these picks um, kind of, and obviously something we haven't talked about, but communication is so important in the pick play uh, behind the net. And uh, so we'll just play this play through this, but. So he goes and gets a pretty good step on him because of that kind of mis, uh, miscommunicated play or uh, pick. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it just um, – it you can see the, the body position of the defenseman, right? They're not really ready for anything. They're kind of just both standing up, I would say. I mean, the, the on-ball defender, but six there, the off-ball defender, look at his approach. He's just kind of like standing up 
he's not really in any athletic position to switch or talk to the guy. I, it, that's a body language one right there for me. Um, and it's a smart move by attackman. But, yeah, the number six there, or the off-ball defenseman, he's the one that's got to really communicate with the on-ball defenseman and, and, and dictate basically, hey, here's my guy, switch. And any, any, any pick around the crease right there is extremely difficult to get through. Um, and I, I, it doesn't matter if it's big little or big on big. A lot of times those, those picks around the crease are end, we end up switch, switching no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's just kind of a defensive rule. So yeah, going into games, it should be, it's automatic. And, and oh. we'll pre- we preach this with our guys as well. Or if not, we're going to start to, it's just big, big picks like this. Let's just switch them. So then we know we're on the same page. Absolutely. Um, it just takes the kind of error out of it. Yeah, these are this is a tough this is really tough and it's it's demoralizing as a defenseman do too because it's such an easy play to talk. It's just a simple communication play, right? Yeah. And and you know, you know, more than I uh, more than ever, like that these communication plays, especially in indoor, when you mess up those picks, you, you pay pretty dearly with them or they get a good shot out of it. Mm-hmm. Um and that's such an easy, easy like there wasn't any contact there. It was really just a, a slip. It was a slip slip pick. And that slip went right into the on-ball defenseman. If if someone just communicated real quick, hey, just switch, switch, switch. Um, and and then two, the you know, I think that I think the on-ball defenseman was anticipating a switch before it even happened. Yep. Um, and so I mean, if you can close that gap on the on ball, you know, and, and it kind of it also helps out your off-ball defenseman where your body position is. But you know, in this position where if I was I was reading my 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 teammates. Uh, position there on ball I would I would switch this all day yeah I I agree with that and he uh at what this defenseman right now, now should be yelling is pick right pick right there should be a, a constant communication so this guy's comfortable to play solid defense he's kind of looking around right away he he's like you said he's is already thinking switch and he switches without I I, I can almost guarantee this uh long pole doesn't tell him to switch he just yeah, so switched on his own. I just read so on the comments. That, uh, that just can't happen. In any type of pick game, it's yeah. the on-ball guy is not the one that's deciding no. to switch. It's always the guy that uh, his, his man's picking. Yep, and it's live with ball. it. On-ball guy, live with it. Um, you know, even if you, think you have, if you have good position on the guy, live with that decision because if you stay, you know, and there, you can go into many different sam- samples of this. But I mean, sometimes you can get a double out of it. Sometimes you can't, um, but yeah, it's, I, I would say on ball guy, live, live with that. Yes. So we got a couple more here. So this, uh, in this situation, it's actually a short stick um, setting the pick from behind, which obviously a ton of people are doing as well now. Yeah. Um, these, why offenses love doing these is because for most, most of the time, 90% of the time, defenses aren't switching these picks. They want their close D to stay with the attackman and, and, and get through these picks. Or if it's the LSM that has, has the matchup on the number one midi, they want them getting through there. Um, it's a little bit different, I think, in the in the pro game. I've, yeah. You guys kind of are, are a little more free to just switch picks. But college, high school, you guys want to – we want to get through these picks the best we can. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. It's because it's they do this for a reason, right? It's it's a set play. Um, you know, it's it's it, it like I said, that's it, it's similar because that's if you put that to the last clip and number ten has a pole, that's almost similar similar pick. You know, it's a little farther out, but um, because it's behind the net, you know, I would say always error on the side of switching, even if it is a pole versus uh, short stay. Even if it's a big little, if it's behind the net. It's okay. Like we always have faith in our in our short stick D middies to play play against anybody. You know, think about it. Like these short stick D middies are some of the most athletic athletic players on the field. They cover a lot of field up in front of the net. So these, so this, you know, playing behind the net, it might be a little different for them. But there's a lot of room for error there um, versus playing playing uh, up top. So. You know, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. Yeah, do we ultimately want to get around or get through this and, and try to maintain our matchups? Yeah, ideally. But 
you know, I always say, hey, let's err on the side, especially if a pick at GLE there where it's tough to get through. Err on the side of, of switching or swapping, and then we can always slide to the short 60 mini. Yeah, in this situation, he has to be able to see his the guy gets picked, and he has to be in a position to switch it. I yep. don't – I he – the communication – is important like always like all defense is but we don't want our guys shouldn't be getting picked off because of, of how well our, we are communicating and so I I sometimes I do like if a if a short stick will come right up beside him and then that will allow him to communicate he can get around it and then right. get on the inside and, and have good inside position again like we had before they this pick is is really tight to the goal line which it makes it so difficult to cover if this guy can get a little bit of contact on his guy, drive him out below the uh, the ten yeah. yard line here or below GLE, that'll give him a little bit more space. But they yeah. need to they need to just you need to have your rules as to how you're playing these for the most part, just to to give you a, a set defensive philosophy. And a lot of times we'll have our guys just come nice and tight. You can get a decent slap on the guy and deter his his path a little bit. Absolutely. And that allows our, our close D to come on the inside and, and continue to play good defense on them. Yeah, even if, even if they want to swap, switch right there, have that, have that short stick D mini just cut across the top of the crease and meet them on the other side. Or just yeah. play that cat-mouse game behind the net. That way, you know, no one's beat. And like you said, use that shot clock to your advantage behind the net. Um, and instead of, you know, ha seeing what happens here, the guy ends up tripping and falling, and they basically just get a good shot or a goal here. So, yeah, and a lot of times if that attack gets his uh, short stick match up, he'll backpedal and, and want to set up a big fancy dodge for himself. That'll yeah. allow us as a defense to get into our invert defense and, and for that. kind yeah. of uh, get it out of there. Yeah, I, I just rely on your athletes and rely on your teammates, right? Like, you know, we always say that, you know, the matchups, the matchups are there. But don't be, don't be so, I guess, stubborn about the matchups. Be like, hey, this is my guy. This is my guy. I got to stay with this guy. doesn't matter. Everybody, everybody's out there for a reason, and everybody can play anybody. Um, prefer, those, those are just preferable matchups, right? Like, those, the, you know, if you're on your guy, it's a preferable matchup. It's not saying no one else can cover him, though. Yeah. So this last clip, um, it's, it's kind of how the, the game is trending and how we expect our – our poles to be able to contribute offensively. No longer is it kind of those days where it's just you're a stay-at-home defenseman and, and that's your job and you just need to worry about slashing and, and, and bodying your guy one-on-one -on -one defense. you got to be able to have skill and, and be able to contribute in the transition game if your number's called. And uh, kind of in these, in these clips, a lot of times you're, you're a, a close defenseman. You're not an LSM, but you had a, a bunch of goals in this uh, 2014 season just – because if the opportunity is there, you jumped up in the rush and, and, yep. and broke out. And you have to have the ability to, to contribute offensively as a defenseman now these days. You can't just be a stay-at-home guy. So in this clip, um, the, you move the ball and, 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 it, and it gets moved a couple times. And rather than what a lot of guys do is just kind of turn their, put their head down and run off, you, you stay in the play and kind of have a little bit of headiness to, uh, yeah. to cut off ball. So we'll play it through once. But it's just – it's so important to be able to contribute. And, and if you do catch it inside, be able to finish that ball. So a lot right. of defenses are, are caught off guard by it. And they yeah, it's a, fall asleep. Like you're saying, a lot of, a lot of defenses are kind of used to the poles. Well, not, not so much anymore, but a lot of these defenses are used to those poles, just moving the ball and turning around and going the other way. And you, you can kind of play like that, right? Like, and just see how it develops. And I thought Randy was going to shoot this one, and then he moves it forward. And, you know, when you're a pole, especially a close guy, running the ball over, a lot of times you're going to end up with either an offenseman on you or you're going to catch somebody in the subbing game. Um, if, you, if you have an offensive player on you, take advantage of it. Uh, you know, keep them on the field as much as possible. Run them around a little bit. And just, you know, just be a ball player, right? Like no, nothing – no one says you have to, you know – you've got to move that, you know, pass the ball over, you know, get over the midline, pass the ball, then run, like sprint back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. But, you know, I, I always like to kind of just see what develops. Um, and then with that being said, just I had the ball in the clear there. But a lot of, a lot of, I think a lot of my opportunities come from being off ball and kind of seeing the play develop ahead. Um, 
and just realized, oh, like you got to communicate with your teammates in the bench side and staying on side. Uh, we had that issue last year a couple times um, with the Chrome just going off sides and I'm running over and I, and I went off sides or there was a miscommunication at the bench side of things. Um, but ultimately the blame's on you when you run over and they're trying to sub through, right? The middies are trying to get on. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I would just say, don't be, a, you know, don't hesitate to run that ball over and be a part of the offense. Um, I mean, especially now, I mean, we have a, we have a shorter shot clock than anybody else in the PLL. It's still plenty of time. You know, you still got plenty of time. Um, and, and, more than anything, those long pole goals are huge momentum goals, right? They're just – they're big they're big momentum goals. They get everybody going. Um, and it, it gives the kind of – it gives your offensive guys a break too. It gets, it gives them an extra rest. Yeah, they're almost kind of free goals that you don't account yeah. for. Um, it's the same, same kind of thing as, as transition goals in, in our league. Um, they're, just, they're just huge boosts, and they just – you don't – count on them so that when you do get them it's just uh, such a such a big boost in the that final score and it, it usually a, a team that adds three or four transition goals is uh on yeah. the right side of a win yeah absolutely that's where we uh last year if you look at the uh our chrome games a lot of the early ones were you know one goal games or uh even overtime losses for us and if you look at the transition goals we lost and that we lost in transition, you know, whether it's, you know, clearing the ball or just offsides calls, we lost, we lost those games in transition, not, not, not six on six or anything like that. It's all transition. Cool. Well, yeah, we got a, a few more minutes. And so while I got you, just maybe a couple questions. So I know one thing that, that you've done so well is just been kind of one of these Americans that have stayed in the box game for, for a very long time and, and excelled in it. And so how much of an emphasis have you placed on, on playing box and what do you think it's done for your, for your field game? It, it does wonders for your field game. It really does. Um, you know, I've been fortunate growing up in Penny and we kind of had the, you would start with, we called the chicken coop. Um, but it basically had chicken wires, like just some boards in a box. And, you know, I was very fortunate to have that growing up, but, you know, kind of play American, Americanized box across a little bit, but it gives you that, uh, it gives you that sense of, you know, that tight and like the boards and stuff like that and the ball always staying in, in bounds. But I guess, you know, the biggest thing for me is just the overall, the two man game, um, being able to work on the two man game, the pick game and you, you, you it, the emphasis on stick skills, uh, the Canadians and, and natives and indoor have some of the best sticks there are. Um, and you can't rely on you can't rely on taking the ball away from these guys because it rarely happens. So you know it's good it's good footwork, good positioning, um, and the overall the box. You know you know more than anybody. You know you know more than I do playing boxes. It, it's forcing a guy to a kind of a position. There's not a there's you know you can attest to it a little bit. There's not a whole lot of one on I'd say one on one in in box right. It's it's more of a kind of a two on two game or it's a you know just a pick game. Um, very rarely do you just go one on one with somebody. So in a, taking that away, it, it's really helped help me out with my teammates and stuff like that, and communicating with my teammates in those two man games behind. Because a lot of guys, a lot of times now, the you'll you'll see it like there's a lot of two man games on the wing. There's a lot of two man games behind. Just all those clips. There's a ton of two man games, um, and you, especially you, you watch when you know Denver won the national championship. They had a bunch of Canadians on the team, and they just were pretty much dominant one hand players and they, they just dominated that two man game. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I, and you see it more and more, and especially when the, in the Canadians won the world championship too. And that's, it's impressive. Um, it, it just, it goes to show that these guys, you know, you can play with just one hand and be dominant in one hand. It's just, you gotta be a smart lacrosse player. Um, and it's, it's, I, I, uh, it's just, and all overall, the whole just, having a lacrosse stick in your, in your hand throughout the whole season. Right. Um, I, I always tell kids in high school and stuff, you know, just play many sports as possible, but you know, for us now, what are we else we going to play? We're going to play rec basketball or, you know, I go play <laughs> hockey here and there, but you know, it's, it's not like we're playing. You're playing the NLL just to stay in, stay in shape. Basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, no, it's, it's honestly, I, I've been fortunate enough that I was drafted by the wings, you know, you know, back in the day and, and it's just been, you know, fortunate to be able to you know get my number called and continue to play and I played some for some great organizations and plays for some 
you know, great teammates, um, especially my rookie year. You know, when you have when you have Brody Merrill as, as your captain and teammate, you learn so much from him. Um, and I think on you know, field guys can attest to that too. You hear nothing but about great leadership from Brody, and I, and that's honestly where I learned a lot of my indoor game from is, is those guys. You know, even Brett Manny, Brett Manny too. You know, being one of the Americans that's continue to be, you know, play indoor. He doesn't even play outdoor; he just plays indoor. Um, and so those guys, I've learned a lot from. You know, I played with those guys, and I've learned tremendous amounts from them. So, and I just think to to the field game, it it just it there's no there's not it's not gonna you know not gonna be bad for your game whatsoever for the field game. Um, you know, we we tried uh, we got John Rannigan to play indoor as well. You know, back in Phil, in the Philly days, and he he loves the game. John's been playing indoor since since then. Yep. Yeah, I think I think it, there's such a large emphasis on and on box for offensive players and we push it to these offensive players for the, the numerous benefits that they get that it, it does wonders for, for offensive guys. But in that loss in translation is what it does for these defenders too. And not only do they get the benefits of all the stick skills and, and that the offensive guys are getting, but the, the angles and everything that, that come in, into play in the box game is, it's it's all it's all it is. It's it's taking away the middle of the floor because if you don't have the middle of the floor, you can't score on those big goalies. So you 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 really get a, a much bigger emphasis and the field game's not that much different. If you take away the middle of the field, you're you're gonna win a lot of games. You're you're gonna count on your goalie to make those low angle saves and or those guys that are taking a lot of low percentage shots. So yeah, uh, the benefits that that defenders can get from playing the box game are, are countless too. And so that's why I'm, I'm obviously a big advocate of it up here. And I know you're, you're a big believer in, in us uh, box cross and absolutely what, what, where you want that uh, organization to go and where you want just team USA to kind of go in these next few years. So. Yeah, I just get more and more Americans involved. I want it to spread across. I think every youth program or any varsity program should have some sort of box. Um, or try to get in winter time, get in the box. It, it it does you know wonders for stick skills. We played with tennis ball, you know, in high school. You know, just having that light ball, it works on your hands, your hands and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I think the one thing that I've really found out playing from box, going from box to you know the field game is I get hit with a lot more shots in the field game. Uh, <laughs> you know, because you go you go in the indoor game, you you approach the head of the stick. And you, you mentioned it, you, you take, talk about approaches. You approach ahead of the stick, these guys aren't really shooting that. You know, yeah. they, like, they if, unless you take a little, you know, they might shoot around your shoulder a little bit. But if you take a good approach towards the head of the stick, these guys aren't shooting that. You know, what they are, but if you take that, that same approach in the America, in, out of the field, these Americans are going to try to shoot around you <laughs> or shoot right <laughs> through you. So I, 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 I had a, honestly, I don't mind that. Um, I realize I do soak more shots in the in, uh, field now since I've played indoor. Yeah, it's less that are that are heading to Galloway. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, well, yeah. So hey, uh, I I really appreciate you coming on. Um, there any time. Yeah, this was uh, this was great. So that was some really good insight, and appreciate you taking your time out of your day. Yeah, good luck okay. to everybody. Stay healthy. Um, you know, get that stick in your hand as much as possible, especially through these crazy times. You know, hit hit the wall as much as possible. Before we know, hopefully lacrosse season will be here. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks. We'll see you guys.